Hey guys, it's Charlie. Um, if uh, fear-mongering works, then why on earth would uh, you stop uh, doing it? If it's working, you know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Now, I'm not talking fear-mongering that uh, some of us here on, uh, on YouTube and other alternative media get labeled with by uh, talking about reality, which, uh, you know, sure enough, is scary. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're not fear-mongering. We're pointing out reality as it is. We're cutting through a lot of the, uh, the fluff and a lot of the hype and showing you what's... Uh, really going on, what a lot of people are seeing, the people that I call awake, who realize what's going on. But uh, the mainstream media, along with our so-called representatives and their appointees, um, truly engage in this practice of fear-mongering. Uh, and an example would be Austin Goolsby. He's the chairman of the uh, White House's uh, Council on Economic Advisors. And he was out on some of the Sunday shows yesterday uh, speaking to Congress, basically sending them a warning not to play games uh, with the uh, debt limit of the country. Currently, we're sitting at, uh, at their stated rate of $13.9 trillion of national debt. The uh, congressional set limit is uh, $14.2 trillion. Uh, we're going to be approaching that and blasting through it uh, in early spring, maybe even sooner than that. And Goolsby's out there saying, you know what, if you don't raise the debt ceiling, uh, then it's going to be catastrophic. Not only is it going to be catastrophic, it's going to be worse than anything that could have happened in the 2008 financial collapse. So here you have a situation where uh, Goolsby is taking a, uh, a play out of uh, Hank, used to be CEO of Goldman Sachs, Paulson's playbook. You know, go out and scare the heck out of the public. Uh, get the word out there that if this isn't done, if we don't do this, if we don't do this extraordinary measure, then it's going to be the end of the uh, financial world. Goolsby is saying the same exact thing. If we don't uh, raise the debt limit, if we don't raise it from 14.2 to whatever, then it's going to be worse than anything that could have happened in 2008. Now, I find it interesting that they, they have absolutely no problem at all uh, instituting the uh, practices of fear-mongering when it's uh, putting the risk of uh, the people who, who make up this country, the citizens of this country, when it puts our dollars at risk, when it puts uh, the debt on our shoulders. Hank Paulson goes out and asks for $700 billion that turns into trillions that the American people uh, are going to be shouldered with, uh, you know, primarily through austerity measures. Uh, Goolsby's coming out saying the same thing. we got to raise the uh, debt, the credit card limit of the country so our representatives, so-called, can go out and spend away. But they could care less when it comes to uh, taking money from people who should be paying the money, which are these giant multinational corporations. And an example is, in 2004, it took an act of Congress uh, to get uh, $368 billion repatriated into the United States. Now, did Congress go to these multinationals and say, if you're going to do business here, you're going to pay taxes here. You're not going to uh, reap the benefits of this market and then uh, store all your wealth offshore. No, they didn't say anything like that. They said, please, please, giant corporations, uh, bring the money back in here and create some jobs. And they said, okay, we'll do it, but we'll do it if you give a, a five and a quarter percent tax rate instead of the uh, typical 35% tax rate. So billions of dollars were left uh, th that were basically stolen from the American people then because no matter how, what the red team wants you to think, or no matter what anybody wants you to think, when these multinationals don't pay that tax, that is your money. You can't get away with some kind of a 90% reduction in your tax. When they do get away with it, it puts more debt on our deficit and you and I are more responsible for it. So in December of last year, just a few weeks ago, when a group of businessmen head to the White House and have a meeting, this time they want the same uh, tax holiday on repatriating the money. But it's not uh, $300 billion this time. It's $1.9 trillion. And they want the same sweetheart deal that they got back in 2004, which is instead of a 35% uh, corporate tax rate, they're going to end up with a 5.25% corporate tax rate, meaning 665 Tax dollars, money that should be going to pay for our deficit, maybe money that could be used instead of raising the nation's credit card on your back, $665 billion is going to end up in the pockets of multinationals. Now, the argument is, well, they use this money to create jobs. But if we look at history in the last decade in this country, 41,000 factories have left this country to go to the Pacific Rim. Uh, eight and a half million jobs have been lost just in this recession. So even if you want to use that argument, we can look at history and say it doesn't work. 
You know, these guys are taking the money. In a lot of cases, they're shoving it into the stock market so they can drive up the stocks that they get paid in bonuses and in options. And then they can sell it out. Maybe they can't sell their Goldman Sachs stock uh, back in 2000 and late 2007, early 2008, when the world was freaking out. But when they received uh, pay through delayed uh, stock options, they can sure sell it a few years down the road after they've used federal government money at zero interest to jack up their stock prices and then bring in billions of dollars offshore that they're not paying taxes on, shove it into the stock market, launder the money, if you will, and then cash out and uh, you know live high on the hog. Rape more wealth out of this nation. Stories are attached. That's all I got.